I've had the script for this video for a very long time, since about, I'd say, early January, maybe even a little bit before that. I've had it for a very long time, because I initially had the sort of um, project rush where you uh, want to make a project really badly, and you start working on it, and everything's going swimmingly, swimmingly for about a week or so, and then you just really fall off because you're just not really, um, not really passionate about it anymore, you know? That happens to me with some projects, but there's also plenty of other projects I will see through just because I actually want to. This is not one of those projects. This was a development rush or a project rush project where um, he just uh, I just really wanted to do it right then in that moment. But um, as time went on, I just got less and less enthusiastic about the whole thing. So end up being incomplete. I just don't have the energy in me to finish this. However, the little I do have, I feel is um, is, is is pretty. High quality is high quality enough to warrant a unfinished video on it, so that's why I'm making this video. Just so not everything I had have, have on this goes to waste. Essentially, all, is, all I have is a script. I feel the script is good enough to where um I could make my own um smaller video on it, as opposed to just rushing through and trying to finish the whole thing. Because if I were to try and rush through and finish it, the script would have gone down in quality severely and not been up to par with the rest. So I'm just making this video just so everything I have just go completely to waste. If you're like me and you grew up in the 2010s, you likely played a ton of Flash games. Hell, you didn't even have to grow up then, they were around before and as well as way after that time period. If you're also like me and had a computer lab in your school, you would of course have those days where assignment would done, need to be done on the computer. Oftentimes, that assignment would be done before the computer lab time was up, so the remainder of that time would of course be spent playing Flash games. In a hidden sense, it always felt as if there was a uh, com competition to see who could find the best games. The ones that felt the most like and were the most similar to Minecraft, Call of Duty, and even Mario, as platformers were always abundant. I never need to deviate, as I, like many others, found lots of enjoyment in these clone-esque games, aiming to capture their mainline popularity and uh, essence. They exceed in some ways, but failed in many others. But the one thing they never were was original. But one day I was shown something that I deemed original, and I found it a really enjoyable experience. That game was Commando 2, shown to me in second grade, the year 2012, by my friend Tim. Now, to be honest, Commando 2 is not exactly an original game gameplay-wise. It derived a lot from games like um, such as Metal Gear Solid and other 2D shoot 'em up games. And actually, after looking up gameplay, <laughs> um, the graphics were definitely copied off of Metal Slug as well. But where it might blend into some gameplay-wise, it always stood out to me art style-wise. Um, again, despite those graphics being from Metal Slug, or um, obviously derivative of those. But for a Flash game, especially one that supposedly came out four years earlier in September of 2008, I'd argue it still does stand out on its own. Not just this specific game, though. I feel like the whole Commando series is capable of holding its own. So a couple days ago, I was bored, and the soundtrack sort of popped into my mind. It's a very stylistic soundtrack, and it's one that easily sticks with you. After a little more research, I decided to go back and play Commando 2 again, as it was the main game of the series for me, just to see how it plays in 2022. I want to see what pros and cons stand out to me that didn't stand out to me as a kid, because uh, anyone argued their sm scopes are much more limited when they're younger. So, I just finished playing it, and we do have a lot to discuss here. Normally I don't do full reviews of games, but this one's pretty simple and easy to wrap your head around. Also it means a lot to me. A lot happens when you open up the first level of the game. Immediately you'll take in the very stylish graphics and environments of the game itself, as well as things like the way the commando guy, that's what we'll call the protagonist, drinks from the flask after he lands, a recurring theme throughout the game's course. For me, the game's soundtrack also really hits the spot, and I've searched up the actual songs themselves, they'll seem pretty they'll seem pretty long, but in actuality, they're just smaller loops repeated like three, four times. Normally I would think this is cheap, but I mean it's really just a flash game, probably made by a very small group of people, so I don't blame them. Also, the songs are actually really well done. They stand out and feel unique, while also fitting in with the game, so big props to whoever made them. They aren't just the same guitar riff or um drum beat <laughs> replay it every 10 seconds. They honestly feel unique despite being despite their length. Let's talk about the enemies now. After a second look, the basic soldiers definitely are inspired by Metal Slug. And now that I think about it, I feel the best way to describe a Commando 2 is Metal Slug, but with either more to it or it maybe greater or different. Something along those lines, as the two games feel similar at times but don't at others. When you come across the basic enemies, they usually, start, they usually start playing an idle animation. This can range from a wide variety of things. If you get too close or start shooting, they'll freak out and start shooting back at you. They're simple, but work well in numbers, similar to the Flood. What they lack in brains and planning, they make up for in numbers and mass. Most importantly, they add to the overall image of the game and really help with the vibe it gives off. It all feels consistent throughout, throughout the time you'll be playing this game. Well, until you get to the later stages, but we'll talk about that later. 
The first two stages are filled with action packed glory of taking down tons of enemies in all shapes and sizes with guns and weapons that all feel very satisfying. The farther you get into these levels, the more different types of enemies you encounter. And that's it, that's the end of the script. Um, I wanted to continue it, but again, if you're having that one-time rush, you'll be so enthusiastic about a project one day, and the next day you'll just not really feel it, you know? I I didn't quite feel, I didn't quite know I was burnt out of it until after a while. Um, I'd say I'm continuously working on it, but it got so bad to the point where a week would pass and only have a sentence worth of text uh, done on it, so in the end I decided the best thing to do was give up. But again, I just want to make this little part, um, just to, um, I just want to speak out about what I have, this so again doesn't completely go to waste, because I feel like the script is pretty well done, and I wouldn't have wanted, I don't want to continue, I wouldn't have wanted to continue it, because if I did, it just would have all fell, fallen off, and you would have had a really good, um, really quality, really a well done opening, and, uh, a very poor, um, rest of the script. Now on to actual Commando 2, I'm just gonna wrap up everything I was going to say about it, let's get the shit out of the window, it's a great fun game. And um, you can't play it online anymore, you need some sort of Flash Game Archive to play it, which I, I literally used a program called Flash Game Archive. I believe it's also on Flashpoint, and there's probably some other archives there that have it, but it's accessible, you know? And it's not like you really need a huge, beefy computer to run it, I mean, look at the game, it's, it's... You can run this thing on a toaster, honestly. But, yeah, so, it was a very fun game. Um, chapter 3, uh, Chapter 1, 2, and 4 are great. Chapter 3 is where I had some issues. Um, there's a lot of things that just feel unfair. There's these crocodiles that, they're not the hardest to deal with, but they're just annoying. You'll jump on them, and you'll try and jump around them, and they'll, I mean, they'll, 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 you can, they're easy to kill. But then there's these sort of plants on the ground that when you step on them, they hurt you, and they sort of stun you almost in a way. And you, it's, it, it's usually easy to avoid them, but then they add this these spiked thorns in front of that section of the screen so you can't actually see them, so you just have to sort of guess where they are. Once you get that pattern down, they're easy to sort of assume, but they're still annoying as hell. And then there's the parkour in this, in this game. Now, these controls, they're great and they're really well done, but they're designed for non-specific movement. They're dying f designed for dodging bolts and taking on tons of enemies. They're not designed for specific made platform jumping, you know? However, this game, in Chapter 3, there's a pretty major, a decent, there's, there's a, a decent amount of platforming in it, and it is not done that well. You'll try and um, jump up, and you'll try and jump over the um, what's the word? You'll try and um, jump over and up through the platforms, but it, it's very easy to uh, slip and miss and fall if you miscalculate and stuff. Some of these platforms are very small and smaller than they should be. If you fall down, the camera doesn't, the camera never goes back in this game. I should probably mention that the camera does not go back. I'm uh, not sure if that was like that. If it was like that metal slick, but in this game, the camera doesn't go back, which would be fine. Except in this section, it's terrible because if you fall, it means you you fall to your death. The camera just won't fall. Um, the camera just won't won't fall you back down, and you'll just be dead. And this is a game where you don't actually take fall damage. I don't know why they didn't have the camera go back or even have this in the first place. Uh, I feel like these parkour sections should a should a either be taken out completely or at the very least made shorter. They shouldn't be as long. They should be as prominent. Um, so yeah, chapter three, things sort of get a little crappy with the parkour, because again, the controls, they're great for dodging tons of bullets and shooting tons of enemies, not so great for specific parkour movement and specific platforming movement. Chapter four, things go back to normal again and things pick up fine. Uh, it's a fun chapter. I'm not going to spoil the final boss just in case you do actually want to play it. But um, yeah, chapter four, things pick up fine again, just chapter three is the uh, rough one. Coming back into this game, I did actually have high hopes, and I had the feeling that it wasn't just my brain tricking me or thinking I had a lot of fun with it back then, like most bad games are. Those, the, you might have a game that you enjoyed a lot in childhood, but when turning to it now, you actually realize it was pretty shitty. That's due to the fact that when we're kids, you know, or when we're young, we only understand things on a very simple, on a very level playing field, right? We don't have the complexities or the ability to understand certain complexities like we do when we're older. So, we only can see things for in a simple standpoint, not a more complex one. Commando 2 is a very simple game. There's not really much strategy to it other than being able to dodge bullets and be accurate with the mouse. That's it. It's a very simple game, and therefore, you're right with the level playing field. It's a very easy game for a kid to understand. If you take a more complex AAA or AA game, we can only see things from a simplistic standpoint. However, we do not have... our brains aren't developed to see all the complexities. You know, the um, problems, essentially. So that's why games seem so good to us as kids when none. And so crappy to us as adults, at least certain games. You know, there's some games that stand test of time that are really good. But those other games that felt good to us as a kid, or felt really fun to play as a kid, they're not so good now because we only saw things for what they simply are. 
you know, coming back, we're able to see things from a more complex standpoint. This allows us to see the flaws and pick them out much better. I mean, just the fact that we're older already helps a lot, let alone the whole complexities of it. But Commando 2 wasn't like that. It's not a really a complex game. It's a simple game made for a simple audience. And coming back into it, I remember this. I remember this it not being that complex. So I realized, you know what? It most likely isn't my nostalgia just tricking me over. I'm probably it's it's not it's probably not going to be one of those situations where it's good when you're playing as a kid, bad when playing as an adult. Not because it isn't. It's because it's a simple game, so I remember it properly. You won't remember things more complex things properly because they're just not simple. You know. Also, things get warped and changed through time, and um, it's just the way our memory works. But enough about memory. Either way, Commander 2 is a very fun, simple game. If you boot up or find a way to play it, you will enjoy it a lot. And not just Commander 2, the other games Commando series as well. Uh, the first Commando game actually is kind of a little difficult to get into due to the controls. They're kind of weird, not similar to Commando 2. They were fine in Commando 2 and done much better. But um, games like Commando Assault, Commando 3 are also lots of fun as well. So check those out. Do yourself a favor. Editor's note, uh, after going through this and editing the video, which was more fun than you might think, I can say I still am disappointed that I never really finished this. Going back and reading through it, I was honestly impressed with myself for the little bit of it that I made, and of course proud of myself as well. That's the one takeaway from this channel you should have about the work you do. Whether it's good or bad, whether it's the maximum or the minimum, or no matter what the project's about, be proud of what you do because you made it. Not the person next to you, but you. That pride as well as passion is what will keep you going and is what will allow you to see a project through. This project had the pride, but not the passion. They can both exist without each other just fine, and thrive just fine, but it's when you put them together that's when you get something really beautiful at times. Come <laughs> on. 